All right, you're welcome back. In recent years, Benue State, the food basket of the nation, has been under attack by suspected Fulani herdsmen. And what started out as clashes between farmers and herders over grazing land took a more dangerous dimension in 2018 after the state passed its anti-open grazing bill into law. Yeah, now hundreds of lives have been lost, including those of security operatives and thousands of property destroyed. Benue State government says it has lost over 400 billion naira worth of property to herdsmen attacks on communities in the state between 2015 and now. Governor Samuel Otom, who disclosed this in Makodi, said the estimate was arrived at following preliminary report of assessment of damages caused by the crisis. Well, the governor, while acknowledging that the passage of the anti-open grazing law led to increased attacks, stated that he had no regrets concerning its enactment, as it was a people's legislation, adding that no amount of intimidation or blackmail would make them repeal uh, the anti-open grazing law. All right, uh, with us in the studio is a security consultant and the CEO of Target Search Global Limited, Femi Arato Kumwale. Uh, good morning. Thanks good for morning. joining us. Good morning. Nice to see you. <laughs> good to see you. Guys. Of course, we'll be joined by other panelists this morning to talk about this. But let's begin with this um, 2016 report by uh, Mercy uh, Core a global humanitarian organization that says that Nigeria has lost about 14, or Nigeria actually loses about $14 billion in potential revenue to the herdsmen attacks that's affected Benue, Taraba, Nasarawa, you know, and all those states in the You're north, the central, bets. or middle, let's, let's you know, call it the middle, middle belt, area. if you like. Sure. That's a lot of cost. We're putting a figure to, you know, it now, now, 400 billion naira. In the local currency. Yeah. Well, it's quite shocking. And that's just in property. We're it's not talking about shocking. the human cost. Mm. Because that, that, that it, cannot be. You can't can you quantify that. To, that. to be honest with you, I feel so bad, you know, when we talk about things like this on our national news dailies and we seem not to get it right and we seem not to even get a single system whereby we can actually quell this problem we have. Mm. Remember years back during the early um, 2000, no, let's start from 90s, in the middle 90s, yeah. we have the Christians and Muslim clashes. Mm -hmm. We refuse to acknowledge the fact that people are being slaughtered and killed all in the name of religion. Now we moved again to Boko Haram insurgency. We tried to look for a way to mitigate a lot of things around it. Now, the middle belt. Moving south, you know, if you move it down, we're going towards the south, the east, and we see it now coming up and up. And what still we're talking about? Yeah. Insecurity in the country. Mm -hmm. During the democracy regime, we've had Obasanjo, we've had Jonathan, now we have Buhari. Now we're moving everything straight down to 2018-19 election, and we're still talking about Ben State. Hezmen attack, Boko Haram attack, IPOP here and there. Are we actually looking into the security system in the country? And yet we want investment into the country to come in. What exactly are we doing with what we have? In terms of this is our structure, this is how we want to manage it, yeah. and this is how we should go. Rather, we just capitalize on the political styles of, oh, it is PDP, it is APC, it is NCP, it is this, it is that. I think we need to sit down and rethink very well that are we actually doing justice to our youths and to our fathers and mothers who are a place in their local villages? Who we see as the people that bring the food down to our cities for us to eat? Mm -hmm. Now the food basket of the country. Benue. It's gone. Taraba. Yeah. Well, we, we just hope it's not gone yet, hmm. but uh, the point there is the damage quite has been done one way or the other. Well, Mike, from technically, the damage is technically huge. Yes. if you look at it technically, yeah. do not let us deceive ourselves. We've lives, properties, mm. Mm. where so do much you want has them been to lost. start from? Mm. So much has been lost. Now, they have a problem with them now. Four different problems. Let me put it that way. What's that? Mm. We have the judiciary problem, we have the military, we have the police, and we have the ethnic clashes around following all these middle belts, where do you want them to start from? Well, the but, governor but, is but exhausted already. But from the reports, we've, we've not really had reports of ethnic clashes recently yet. What do you call the headsmen? 
If they come in form of herdsmen and they are Boko Haram, what do you call them? And they're attacking the villages, they're attacking churches, mosques, and a whole lot of things. What do you call that? So well, fundamentally, we still have a problem of, of misdiagnosis, if you like, as some analysts have described. It's a cancer that, that we we've cannot not been even able analyze. to say yeah. exactly this is what the problem is, so that we're actually able to prefer... Because we have used you know, politics lasting, to cover the whole lot up. We are using politics to cover the whole lot up. Hmm. Let us take politics aside for so, God's but, but sake in, for in all of this, who, who do we hold responsible for hmm. using politics to... Uh, uh, garnish mm. or using politics to cover up on all of this. Who uh, do you hold problem. responsible, Mike? Yeah. Who do we hold responsible? Mm. Yeah, it's a fair question. Really? Let us take a look at what Buhari said during his inauguration. Yeah. I take responsibility for whatever happens under my watch. It's a very strong word. And you are asking me, who do we hold responsible? He is the father of the nation. He is the commander of the country. He is in charge of the armed forces, ruling council, and the police, and everybody. And we're still asking, who do we hold responsible? Mm. It's got a lot to answer, more than a lot to explain. What happened to the security budget vote given to governors to maintain their borders, to maintain the internal security? Let's, we'll explore that. Let's all this. explore that a bit. You no, know, we the, won't the explore issue. the right no, now. No, no, no. The issue of security, <laughs> the security votes that's given to governors. Yes. Every governor in this country, in all yes. 36 states, right. has some security vote. Okay. And you, you, a lot of people have questioned exactly what the security vote is really all about. But the, it speaks for itself. It's to provide security, mm -hmm. to ensure security yes. at the state level. At the state level. So what is happening in that area? I mean, a, a governor or Tom has come up with a law backed by the state, uh, you know, um, assembly right. to ban open grazing. And according to reports, including statements coming from the defense minister, uh, Mansour Dan Ali, yeah. that that law has further increased this herdsman attacks that as a matter of fact, that law should be suspended. So the governor has tried to at least come up with a law to stop it, but it doesn't seem to be solving this problem. So what next? What are we doing with the security votes? The question is this. If you're asking me what are we doing with the security mm. votes, I can go back as far back as 2009, 2010, 2012, 2011, on and on and on and on. Mm -hmm. If we even go on YouTube and everything, just look at Benue State, Plato State, and all the rest, Marco D, and ask one simple question. If you have any security system going on in your state, you want everybody to see it. If you look at Lagos State, let us take Lagos State for, um, that could, let, let's use them as a typical example right now. Mm. They are spending more than the security budget votes. Even if it's not fully well in place, well fully implemented, at least we can see that yes, one way or the other, they are managing their security in Lagos State, in other states. Are they actually doing the same? So the question is, governors, come back to the table, tell us what have you used your security budget vote for? Yeah, but in, 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 this, in this case... for itself right it, now that it has all failed. Yeah, in this case where the, the, the security apparatus in the country is run like a unitary system where everybody, everything answers to the middle in, in Abuja. Mm. The police is not controlled by the governors. The yes, DSS or SSS is not controlled by the governors. The military is not controlled by the governors. In this case, what can they really do when, when the, the chain of command or the final chain of command ends in Abuja? No, that's not true. I don't believe that. Let's look at it from this angle. You can always come up with a strategy that will work for your community, that will work for your state. And once you come back with your strategy, make the strategy work so that at least you know fully well that lives and properties. What kind of strategy? In a place like what, Benue, what kind, what kind of, of strategy? Yeah. Exactly. What kind uh -huh. of strategy would you be recommending for a, a place like Benue, Benue, for instance? Benue State can actually apply the counterterrorism strategy that you need to know who is within your community and what goes around your border and what goes around the local farm areas. Where do we have the hunters? What sort of awareness and security have we actually given to them in the past? And we keep talking, as a typical example right now, mm. they are spending more than the security budget votes. Even if it's not fully well in place, well fully implemented, at least we can see that yes, one way or the other, they are managing their security in legal state, in other states. Are they actually doing the same? So the question is, governors, 
come back to the table, tell us what are the user security budgets vote for. Yeah, but in, in, in this case... And this resource for itself right it, now that it has all failed. Yeah. In this case where the, the, the security apparatus in the country is run like a unitary system where everybody, everything answers to the middle in, in Abuja. Mm. The police is not controlled by the governors. The S DSS or SSS is not controlled by the governors. The military is not controlled by the governors. In this case, what can they really do when, when the, the chain of command or the final chain of command ends in Abuja? No, that's not true. I don't believe that. Let's look at it from this angle. You can always come up with a strategy that will work for your community, that will work for your state. And once you come back with your strategy, make the strategy work so that at least you know fully well that lives and properties are what kind of strategy? in a place what, like Benue. What, 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 what kind of, of yeah. strategy, exactly? What kind uh -huh. of strategy would you be recommending for a, a place like Benue, Benue, for instance? Benue State can actually apply the counter-terrorism strategy that you need to know who is within your community and what goes around your border and what goes around the local farm areas. Where do we have the hunters? What sort of awareness and security have we actually given to them in the past? And we keep talking about, oh, we are implementing security. In what way? What level of security materials have we actually given to them to showcase that, yes, my security budget vote, this is what is going into? Nothing. Mm. Let us take a closer look at what happened within when Bado was in in charge in, in, charge in Ikorodu and all mm. the rest. They came up with a strategy that, okay, we're not going to only use the local police officers around there, the vigilantes, the community leaders, mm. a lot of people. They were all on the round table and they said, you know what, let's tackle this heads on. And today, we can see the results. So it's not enough for a governor, Samuel Atom, to say to his people, uh, you have to defend yourself, defend yourself with stones or with whatever... Uh, means possible. I was shocked when I heard that. <laughs> I was shocked when I heard the story. And to be honest with you, I am a Nigerian. Yeah. And I love my country. I can do so much in Bono State more than what Bono State will even think. I can do so much in Benue State more than what Benue State will think. But the problem is this. Give the youth the platform to think about what strategy will work for their community. They refuse to do all that. Mm. Why do they have the counselors in the first so place? So the solution will come from, from within. From within, not even from the outside. They have the solution within, but they refuse to give them the chance to do but it. But when President Buhari says the herdsman attacks are really a social, uh, logical, and economic a problem and not uh, religious. It, it almost means that you, you get a sense that he understands what the problem is. But the real problem is, how do we solve this problem? Then my solution <laughs> is this, give the youths, give the council of elders within that community a chance mm. to analyze exactly how they can protect themselves mm. and we'll see a result out of it. It's a pilot scheme. Allow it to work first. If it doesn't work, it then we take it to the next level. Mm. All right, we have joining us from Abuja now, a lawyer and public affairs analyst, Terence Vembe. Terence, good morning. It's good to have you join us right now. Uh, a lot of Nigerians are still very concerned about what is going on in the food basket of the nation. That's in, in Benue. The governor has come to make it clear that the state has lost over or about 400 billion naira in property, mm. uh, whether farms and uh, livestock or whatever uh, is owned by the people, not, not, not even mentioning lives there. Now, what impact yes. is this having really, or how devastating is this revelation? I seriously want to believe that 400 billion will be an understatement. I'm very sure the governor has not really gone in to take stock of uh, mm. these villages and communities where the, uh, the terror has been unleashed on them. Like you said, we are living out lives. But if we look at the scenario of Benue State, the, particularly the thief area, the pattern of settlement is scattered. They don't gather in one place because these are farmers. That is the only thing we do in Benue State. There is no virgin land in Benue State. Every piece of land is cultivated up to the backyard. Now, every of these persons rely on the small piece of land they, that they cultivate for subsistence farming. So that if you look at every farmer, that soya beans that they cultivate, that uh, uh, granules that they cultivate, the yams, the citrus farms. If we look at the volume of rice farm, especially if we come around Guma area, 
people cultivated tens of thousands of hectares of land. That is just, inter and all this was destroyed. Fine. They have moved into another phase. They have run and left their villages. Each of these households will have their small particular thing that they were using. That is looking at the households, their properties, their everything. Everything has gone with these attacks. It is heinous. So honestly, if you look at living out the human lives, if you look at even just the value and go and take actual stock, 500 billion will be small. We, uh, we, we did a small estimation with our physical observation on ground. Mm. The few places we, we have gone to, already we have gone over a trillion naira. Mm. I, I wonder what this portends, uh, not only for Benue State. Uh, there have been reports that in the next uh, number of years, uh, Nigeria may just be facing uh, famine. And then let me uh, bring to your attention to a report uh, sponsored by uh, DFID that uh, uh, Nigeria has lost about $14 billion every year since the herdsmen attack started in that part of the country. What do you think this really portends uh, for, for the nation? We are, we, are heading, we are heading towards hunger crisis. That is the truth. Look, what this has done is that apart from destroying what these people have, the seedlings have also been destroyed. We have seen cases where these attackers, actually it is a direct economic attack on, on, on Benue and the other communities and states that have been attacked. We are these people attack and scare these people, uh, the, 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 the occupants away and they run away. They go and take over their barns, feed the food to the cattle, the one that is remaining, they destroy it, which means they are not even able to cultivate for the next season. People should be cultivating now, and they are there in uh, refugee camps, they can't get to their villages, they can't get their communities to cultivate, which means apart from what you have already cultivated and has completely been destroyed, there is nothing for you to fall back on. Next year, is, there is, the, the future is gloom because no, they are not cultivating. And when you see the, that large chunk of food supply coming into Nigeria now being cut away, we are holding together, we are getting for a hunger crisis. All right, Terence, let, let me stay with you on this. Uh, so far, are there any particular strategies that the government and the the government of Benue and the government and the federal government are putting together to ensure that this is handled or nipped or in fact not nipping the board mm. anymore because uh, a already. lot of things have uh, spilled already but is, is there any particular uh, platform they've had together to put this thing to an end very unfortunately no since all these things these attacks and we are looking at back as far as far back as uh, 2013 the federal government has left the states to their fate. The people of Benue State have been abandoned by the federal government. Nobody is making any attempt to solve this problem. If we see the voices of the federal government, they are discordant. Today, a very high-ranking uh, person as, as the IG comes up and says that it is communal clashes, which means they don't even understand the problem going on there at all. The next day, a minister of defense at the highest level comes out and says that roots, cattle roots, whoever made them, are being blocked. You, the state government has been trying by their own. In fact, the citizens first took the bull by the horn by making a law and submitting to the, to the, to the state house of assembly, which eventually attracted an executive bill and they were harmonized, and we have a law prohibiting open grazing. Very simple. You are saying that it is because of cattle, these cows, that you are attacking these places. Fine. You even say they are rustling your cattle. And when we have a law that says, look, there is no space in Benue. Every land is cultivated up to the back, up to the backyard. If you come in, you are going to destroy our, our crops. So don't graze openly. If you need to graze in Benue State, restrict your animals. And, that, and then the law still goes ahead and say, this is cattle rustling, these people are complaining about. If you rustle a cattle, 
just one cow you are going to we are going to prison for so so, so this thing. In fact, up to life imprisonment and death, where mm. the death occurs in the course of Rosny. You have put cattle and human lives by implication in this law at par. And yeah. we are expecting that there should have been an economic boom. Investors should okay. have been rushing to Benin State um, because this there's so much value the grass. Terence Vembe, we don't have any more time, unfortunately. Uh, but would you recommend compensation, since we seem to have a figure uh, to what has been lost property-wise? There is no alternative than to adequate compensation. In fact, the people of BNST are at the ECOWAS code asking for compensation in the sum of one trillion naira to be able to renovate and uh, revamp these places, bring them back to life. Mm. If I have my way, one trillion naira was back. Now it has even increased. The, the devastation has increased. It should even be more. We should right. have trillions of naira to put into these communities. Okay. okay. Uh, Terry Vembe, a uh, lawyer and uh, public affairs analyst, thank you very much for talking to us uh, this morning. And of course, Femi Arato Kumale, thank mm -hmm. you very much. CEO, uh, Target Search Global Limited Security Consultant. Also, thank you very much for thank your you time. So thank you so uh, do we have enough time to well, quickly look have, at the headlines again? No, unfortunately, we don't. Have again? Enough time no,